Hello students, welcome back to this session. We are presently doing module 5 of the course Analog and Digital Electronics. In the module 5, we started with in the first session a brief look at the decade counter and a bit of presetable counters. Now, moving on, let us try to do a design synthesis problem. So, this session basically is now called as the counter design as a synthesis problem. So, what are the learning outcomes for this particular session? Upon successful completion of this session, the students should be able to design the counter as a finite state machine, which we call as an FSM. So, what exactly is a FSM that we will see in the next slide. For example, let us say the design problem that is given to us is to design a mod 6 counter. To design a mod 6 counter, we follow an approach of what we call as finite state machine. What is a finite state machine? So, basically the first thing that we have to realize is if we were to implement a mod 6 counter, the number of states would be 6, they would go from all the way from 0 0 0 to 1 0 1 which is 0 to 5. To do that, we understand that we require at least 3 bits. Because using 2 bits, we can only do up to 0, 1, 2 and 3 which is mod 4. So, if one mod 6, we have to move to 3 bits. So, in this case, basically first we go and write what are all the stable states for this mod 6 counter. So, as shown in the diagram here, this is called as a finite state machine. It shows all the stable states this particular circuit can take and the sequence of the change of states that is how does it change from one state to another. Since we need to implement a binary sequence, we are going to do a binary counter starting from 0 all the way up to 5 and back to 0. So, the counts are going to be like this. So, this you can think it as a 3 bit number. If it is a 3 bit number, let us call this as a C, B and A, where C is called as the most significant bit or MSB, while L is called as the sorry A is called as the LSB which is the least significant bit. Now, each of these are nothing but a flip flop. Let us say we go ahead and use a JK flip flop, which is the most versatile flip flop, which ensures that it can never go into a runaway state. Now, we do not have any raised state in a JK flip flop. It can either be in a memory state, set state, reset state or it can be in a toggle state or in a, I can say a toggle mode rather. So, that means what if you consider each of these C, B and A as one of the flip flops then we analyze the way j they change the states individually. For example, initially let us say the values are 0, 0 and 0. Next time when the clock pulse comes, I want the counter to indicate 0, 0, 1. So, let us write it as 0, 0, 1. What does this mean? This means at the first clock edge, my flip flop A will transition from 0 to 1, whereas the other two flip flops B and C will continue to remain at 0. So, the first mode is called as either a set mode since we are going from 0 to 1 or we can also call it as a toggle mode. Why? Because I can go from 0 to 1 means it is toggle, I can go from 0 to 1 means it is set also, while 0 to 0 is simply a memory mode. So, in this way, we can think of this entire thing as transitioning from one value to another value. When the next clock cycle comes, what should the count indicate? The count is going to indicate 0, 1 and 0. That means, A will toggle from 1 to 0. You can visualize this as a toggle mode or is there any other way we can visualize this? Yes, we can also visualize this as a reset mode or a clear mode because I am changing the flip flop output to 0. If the previous output was 1, I am also doing a toggle. So, it can be a toggle mode or a clear mode while what happens to the flip flop B now? Now, the flip flop B is changing the state. Since it is binary, it has to go from 0 to 1. So, it can either be a set state, set mode or it can be a toggle mode while C continues to be in the memory mode which is it remains at what its previous output was. It can also be thought of in term of a clear mode, yes or no, because 
if the previous output is 0, the next output wants to be 0, I can either go to memory mode or I can go to what is called as a clear mode. So, this way we can handle this individually and try to write what we call as the state transition table for each of the flip flops and then try to find out some logic for what should be the value of j, what should be the value of k for each of these flip flops. So, let us say we are going to have three flip flops c, b and a all of these are j k flip flops. So, if these are j k flip flops let us call their inputs as j a and k a for flip flop a, j b and k b for flip flop b, j c and k c for flip flop c and all of them are going to be clocked. So, let us now then write the straight transition table, but before I go there let us do a bit of a recap as to how we can write the values for set, reset, toggle or memory state. For that we need to go back to our basics of visiting the JK flip flop. So, what exactly was a JK flip flop? If it is a JK flip flop the inputs are going to be J and K for the sake of simplicity I am not showing the value of clock here, but whenever the clock comes only then the transition can happen. The inputs are going to be J and K and the outputs are going to be Q n plus 1 right. What does Q n plus 1 mean? What is the next state of the output ok. Now, if the inputs are 0 and 0 to J and K the output is going to be in memory state or uh, that means Q 1 plus n plus 1 is going to be the same as Q n ok. That means, it is going to retain whatever is the previous value. If the previous value was 0, it will retain as 0. If the previous value was 1, it will remain as 1. Next, let us say if the inputs are 0 and 1 and when the clock comes, again I am saying the clock comes though I am not showing here. So, if it is 0 and 1, what the output should be? Yes, since k is 1, it has to clear the output means the output irrespective of what its previous output was the next output which we call as q n plus 1 is going to be 0 because I am doing a clear. Next let us say if the inputs j and k are 1 and 0 then the output is going to be set right. So, irrespective of what the previous output was the new output is going to be logic 1 or logic high. Finally, if both the inputs are 1 and 1 j k flip flop goes into what we call as a toggle mode. What is toggle mode? Toggle mode means the new output is simply the complement of the previous output. If the previous output was q n then the new output is going to be q n bar. For example, the previous output was 0 the new output would be 0 bar which is 1. If the previous output was 1 the new output is going to be 0. It is always a complement or we are toggling its previous output. Now, this is what we have already studied. You must be wondering why is it that I am trying to tell this again since it has already been covered. Now, we are going to look at it in a slightly more different way. Now, I am going to try to depict this. This is a typical what you call as a truth table. Now, let us try to write a state transition table. What does a state transition table mean? Let me draw the table for that. Let us say if the present input is sorry present output is q n the new output is q n plus 1 ok. Then what should be the values of j and k ok. This is a very important thing what am I trying to do? I am trying to now reverse the role. What is it that I am saying? I have a certain previous output I am going to give a new output. Now, for this to happen what should be the values of j and k that is a very interesting observation we have to make. Now, let us say the previous value was 0 and let us say the next value it is continue to stay at 0. So, what are the possibilities now? All of us will jump and say the possibilities it is a memory state. So, let, let both j and k be 0 and 0, but is there another possibility? Yes, another possibility is if k were to be 1 will it still be 0? What I am trying to say is if j is 0 and k is 1 what will happen to the next output? The previous output was q n. If I make k is 1, the next output is also going to be 0. That means, I am going to clear. So, the possibilities are 
for the transition to happen from 0 to 0, there is no transition actually, from 0 to 0, the values of j and k are 0 and it can either be 0 or it can be 1. So, what we do in that case, we call this as do not care. What does do not care mean? It can either be 0 or it can be 1. Why is it that we use this notation? It will become more obvious once we do what we call as k map simplifications. I will come to that analysis as and when we reach there. But at present, do not care would mean whether it is at 0 or whether it is at 1, irrespective of that, if j is 0, then my output is going to remain at 0 if the previous output was 0. Now, let us look at another possibility. If the previous output was 0 and the new output I want it to be 1, what are the possibilities? All of us will again jump and say, okay, the possibility is it can be a toggle mode. That means what? I need to have both j and k as 1. If both j and k are 1, when the next clock comes, I keep saying that when the next clock comes, the output will toggle from 0 to 1. But is there another possibility here? Yes, there is. The possibility is if k were to be 0, what will happen now? Look at this scenario now. I am having a scenario where j is 1, k is 0. So, what will happen? Irrespective of what the previous output was, when the clock comes, it sees that j is 1, k is 0, it will go and set the output. Right? So, the possibilities are j can be 1, the possibility, I mean the actual input possibilities for a transition of the output from 0 to 1 are j can be 1, k can be do not care exactly. So, it can either be 1 or it can be 0. So, I can call it as 1 and x. What are other possibilities now? The other possibilities are if the previous output was 1, the next output I want it to be 0. Again, what are the possibilities? The first possibility is toggle mode. Toggle means both j and k would be at 1. Another possibility is the next state has to be next output has to be 0 means I can clear. So, for clear, what should be the thing? j has to be 0. If j is 0, k is 1, then I am going to clear the output. So, this condition would result in as x and 1. J can be anything, but k has to be 1. If j is 1, it is 1 and 1 toggle board toggles. If j is 0, it is 0 and 1, it is a clear board or a reset mode. Finally, the previous output was 1 and the next output also has to be 1. What are the possibilities? Memory, right? Both 0 and 0. The possibilities both j and k are 0 and 0, or if I want the output to be 1, I have to make j as 1. If it is 1 and 0, that means I am setting the output. If it is 0 and 0 means I am returning the output. So, the net result is j can be anything, but k has to be 0. So, this is a very important, uh, you can say a corollary of the, our understanding of the way j k flip flop works. We are going to use this state transition table in order to design our counter, that we will see later. So, first let us then try and say, now remember this is only for one flip flop. Now, let us write all the possible flip flops that we have in our design and what are the possible inputs. So, if we have three flip flops, let them call, let us call them as C, B and A. So, what is it going to be? I will call this as C, B and A. Okay? Maybe I will just try to make it a bit more closer, so that we can use the entire board. Okay, we will call this as C b and a. Now, if you want to represent the current state, we will call it as c n, b n and a n. Just like I would like to show here q n and q n plus 1, I would like to show c n, c n plus 1, b n, b n plus 1 and a n and a n plus 1. So, let us then write c n plus 1, b n plus 1 and a n plus 1. Okay? So, this is going to be the possibility for my state transition table. So, remember the state transition finite state machine diagram. If the initial state is 0, 0 and 0, what is the next state that we expect for a counter? If it is an up counter, it increments by 1. That means, its value changes to 0, 0 and 1. Okay? Previous state is 0 for all the flip flops, 
whereas the next state is C and B remains at 0 while the A flip flop toggles to 1. So, our job is to write the values of J and K for each of these flip flops. So, that is a challenge, right. So, let us call this as J C and K C, right. Similarly, so these are the inputs which correspond to flip flop C. Next, let us write the inputs which correspond to flip flop B. I will call them as J B and K B, right. Finally, for the last flip flop which is my A flip flop, I am going to write the values as J A and K A. So, this would be our state transition table, ok. Now, let us look at them as one flip flop at a time that is bit by bit. Initially only concentrate on flip flop C. The previous state is 0, the next state ok, by previous I mean C n, by next I mean C n plus 1 as in case of this state transition table that we have here. So, if the previous state is 0, if the next state is 0, then what are the va possible values of J, C, J and K? 0 and 0, the possible values are 0 and x, it is as simple as that. So, the, the inputs at the J and K of flip flop C are going to be 0 and do not care, means it can either be 0 or it can be 1 as we have done here, I do not have to explain it again. Similarly, what about B? B starts with 0 and it stays at 0. So, again it is a 0 and 0 which, which uh, constitutes 0 and x. Finally, the last flip flop which is flip flop A, the inputs were the, the previous output was 0, the next output was 1. So, if it is 0 and 1, the state transition table re, uh, requires that the j k inputs be 1 and x as per that. So, I am going to write for A 1 and x, right. Now, why is it that I am doing all this? My ultimate goal is to design a circuit. What does that circuit have? That circuit is going to have three flip flops and since it is a flip flop, it is going to have the output and the inputs. The outputs are nothing but C B A, this being the present input, this being the next uh, next output sorry means the way it transitions. Similarly, J C and K C are the inputs for the flip flop C, J B and K B are the inputs for the flip flop B, J A and K are the inputs for flip flop A. At the end of the day, we are going to decide how are we going to interconnect these flip flops, so that the entire circuit behaves in the way we want it to behave like a mod 6 counter ok. So, let us proceed then, I hope the first step is very clear that means to transition from 0 0 0 to 0 0 1, these have to be the inputs for my 3 flip flops. What is the next transition? Now, the this 0 0 1 becomes my present input earlier 0 0 0 was a present input and 0 0 1 became next input. Now, this becomes my present input. Now, I am already at 0 0 1, where do I transition next? So, my next transition will be I increment by 1. So, increment by 1 means what? From 0 0 1 I have to go to 2 which is 0 1 0. So, again you have to repeat the procedure. What is the procedure? Write the values for J C, K C, j b k b and j a k a. So, for flip flop c it is again 0 to 0. So, 0 to 0 is again 0 x ok. This time b is transitioning from 0 to 1. So, it will be 1 and x and c is transitioning from sorry a is transitioning from 1 to 0. So, 1 to 0 is x and 1. So, quickly we could do it right. The first step took so much time the second step was much faster. So, let us quickly run through the remaining uh, state transitions, so that we can complete this design quickly. So, this becomes the present state, this becomes the next state which is 2 to 3 ok and then I will go again right from 0 to 0, it is again 0 x, from 1 to 1 it is x 0 ok from 0 to 1 it is 1 x. Next present state is 3, the next count becomes 4 ok. Again individually 0 to 1 is 1 x, 1 to 0 is x 1, 
and finally, this also is going from 1 to 0. So, 1 to 0 is again x and y. Now, from 4 that becomes the current state and the next state is 5, which is the last state after which it goes back to 0. Now, transition for C is from 1 to 1. So, 1 to 1 is x 0. Okay. For B it is 0 to 0, which is 0 x and for A it is 0 to 1. So, 0 to 1 is 1 and x. Finally, what is the last transition? If the present state is 1 0 1, what should the next state be? Does it have to go from 5 to 6? No, it is a mod 6 counter, it has values from 0 to 5, after 5 it has to go back to 0. So, the next state would be 0 0 0. So, what are the j k values now? From 1 to 0 it is x 1, okay. from 0 to 0 it is 0 x and finally, from 1 to 0 it is x 1. Then we do not have to repeat. Now, this starts from here again. Now, from 0 0 0 it again starts from here and this table repeats. So, I have to write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 possible state transitions and finally, I could arrive at all the j and k values. Now, our job is to find out if I can just use this portion of the board to tell what it is. So, my job is to find out what is j a, what is k a. Similarly, I have to find out what is j b value, what is k b value and I have to find out what is j c and what is k c. So, we will typically get some Boolean expressions for this that we have to implement as a circuit. So, let us start with the easy one which is trying to find out what is j a and k a. Now, if you look at this column for j a and k a, okay, now my job is to solve for this, okay, I have to solve for this. Now, just by mere observation, we can figure out the entire j a, it is either 1 or x. Now, the beauty of this x is I can interpret it as either 1 or I can interpret it as 0 based on my convenience. So, in my case it would be convenient if I could assume this as 1. So, if I assume this or take it as 1 then what will happen to all these values? My j a is always going to be 1 yes or no because do not care I can interpret it as 1 or as a 0. So, if I take it as 1 then j a becomes 1. So, your j a is done. So, j a is 1 means what does that mean? You have to connect j a to plus v c c or logic high that is all. Similarly, what about k a? Again the same case all of them are either 1 or x. So, what will I do? I will interpret all the do not cares as 1 and then k a also becomes 1. So, life is become very easy now right. So, for the first I mean the m s uh, so the l s b okay, a is the least significant bit flip flop. For L s b which is a, the values of j and k are both the flip flop inputs are tied to v d d or sorry v c c. Okay. So, that is done. Similarly now, can we solve for j b, k b, j c and k c? It would not be that easy for that we will have to follow a method of what we call as Carnot map simplifications or k map which is uh, as it is very popularly known as. Okay. So, let us try to then solve for, to, uh, let us try to first solve for what we call as j c right. So, let us try to solve for j c next. So, this is done. Let us now try to solve for j c. To solve for j c all I have to do is put all these values in take these two columns. Okay, I just have to take these two columns now this one and this one that means present state and what the value of j c should be. So, I will put it in the form of a k map. Okay. So, for that uh, I think uh, we will not need this particular thing. So, I will just rub this part here okay. and I will try to draw all the k maps on top over here. So, now it is a three variables right. Basically, I want to express j c as a function of c, b and a because c, b and a are the input variables. How do I want to interconnect the inputs flip flop from the outputs of the flip flop. So, for that I am going to construct a three variable k map. What does the three variable k map have? 
okay this is how it is going to be okay. So, this is going to be a 3 variable k map wherein you start with the MSB here and then you have the LSBs that is C is on this side B and A are on that side and what are the values here I read this as 0 and 1 there are many different ways of doing it some of them write it as C n bar and C n. So, you can write it as C n bar and C n also different ways of interpreting it and then we write these as 0 0 0 1 remember it is a grey code. So, it is 1 1 and then 1 0. Some of the books they write it as b n bar a n bar b n bar a n b n a n and b n a n bar. We choose to write it as 0 and 1. Why do we do that? If we do this method it becomes very easy to interpret from here to here. Okay? So, now just observe this column for j c. When the inputs are 0 0 and 0 what is the value for j c? 0. So, all I have to do is find out where it is 0, 0 and 0, it is this box. So, for this box all I have to do is write this value, it will be 0. Next for 0, 0, 1 what it should be? Again 0. Next for 0, 1, 0 it is again 0, but where is 0, 1, 0? It is here, okay? you cannot write 0, 1, 0 here because it is 0, 1, 0 is here. So, 0 1 0 value is 0 that I have to write here. Next 0 1 1 the value is 1. So, 0 1 1 the value is 1. Next 1 0 0 the value is x for 1 0 0. For 1 0 1 again the value is x. So, for 1 0 1 the value is x. Now, in our design we do not have the case where the present state goes to 1 1 1 or 1 1 0. Why? Because it is a mod 6 counter, but since we have to fill up this we straight away go and use the do not care means I do not care whether it is 0 or 1 because anyway I am not going to be in that state and I am not going to use those inputs at all. So, this becomes your k map for solution for j c in terms of variables c, b and a. Now, our job is to apply the k map simplification rules and arrive at an expression. Okay? So, typically we are going to employ what we call as sum of min terms, okay? uh, it is just a repetition as to what you have done in the earlier sessions. So, basically what does sum of min terms mean? I can express the solution for J c, now this is for J c right. Now, I can express J c as sum of min terms made up of C, B and A. For example, the value could be J c is equal to C, B, A odd with c bar a b odd with c bar a bar b bar whatever it could be. So, that is called as a sum of min terms. Okay. But the benefit of having this k maps is you can simplify it to whichever way you want. You can you can you can merge the boxes together and eliminate the variables. For example, each term here like for example, each term here is represented by three variables. Now, this is represented by variable C, B and A both all the three. Now, if we can merge two blocks then we can eliminate one variable. If we can merge four blocks we can eliminate two variables. So, and if you can merge all of them which happened in case of this there are no variables it is it is a constant. So, let us then try to see how we can merge these ones. I am interested only in sum of min terms. So, I only concentrate with ones. If it does some product of max terms then we combine the zeros. So, our job is include all the ones in the design. So, if I use this one here then I will end up writing it as C n bar and a b b a. Instead what will I do is I will mix that with this box here in the sense I have interpreted this x as now 1. So, that I will merge these two which can allow me to eliminate one variable. Now, what is that variable? Again, I will tell you another simple way in which you can do this. Okay. So, normally how do we write is? Okay. So, this we can write it as C n bar and C n. Okay. 0 stands for C n bar and 1 stands for C n. Now, wherever the first term is 1. Okay. So, where is the first term 1? In this column 
and in this column the first term is 1. So, that corresponds to your second variable b. So, I will I will I will mark these two columns as those belonging to b n. Similarly, the last term which is for a n find the columns which where it is 1. So, a n is 1 in this column and a n is 1 in this column. So, I will mark these two columns as a n. Okay. So, I will mark these two columns as a n. So, what I basically done is I have identified these two columns belong to b n, these two columns belong to a n and this column belongs to c n. Now, all you have to do is purge this and come out with an expression. Now, if you look at this box, where does this box belong to? That will be my question. First, does it belong to C n? No, it is also there in C n bar. So, I cannot take C n. So, C n is a variable which is automatically eliminated because it is there in both in C n as well in C n bar. So, eliminate that variable. Then next, where is it? Is it in B n? The answer is yes, yes it falls in B n. But does it completely fall in B n? No, 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 no. It only falls in B n wherever there is a n also. Because a n belongs to these two, b n belongs to these two, this is the only column where both b a and a belong. So, I can write the expression as b n ended with a n. It is very similar to though the analogy can be wrong, very similar to trying to say what is the intersection of two sets. Okay? There is a set of b n here, there is a set of a n here, my box is intersection of these two. So, in logical terms I can write it as b n ended with a n. So, finally, the expression for j c then becomes okay, the expression for j c then becomes b n times a n. Okay. Why? Because I could merge these two blocks. So, this is how you can solve for k c. So, what else is left now? What is left is we have to repeat the procedure for k c, we have to repeat the procedure for j b and we have to repeat the procedure for k b. So, we will do that quickly, it should not be taking much time for us to do it. I will utilize this side of the board for that. Okay. Next, again it is a 3 variable, again I am going to write, this time I am going to write the expression for, I am going to write the expression for k c. Okay. So, again I will write it as c n b n a n 0 1 okay. 0 0 0 1 1 1 1 0. Okay, that is what the uh, 4 variables are. Now, what are these values? Straight away go on writing. When it is 0, 0, 0, it is x and so on. So, 0, 0, 0 is x, x, third is x, remember third is there, fourth is also x. Okay. What about the fifth one? It is 1, 0, 0. So, fifth one is 0, 1, 0, 1 is 1 the rest all are do not care. Okay. So, we are going to have a k map for the input k c in terms of variables c, b and a. Okay. Now, we have to merge if possible 2, if possible 4, because just taking 1 would mean I have to take all c n, this is by b n and this is my a n. So, if I merge these two, I will be able to eliminate one variable which is C n, but can I not merge these four? Yes, I can. Why? Because all these are do not care if I interpret them as 1. So, I will have four ones here. So, if we group four of them which we call as a quartet, okay, this was a duplex that was a quartet. So, I will be able to eliminate two variables. Now, what does this box belong to? This box belongs purely to a n. Why? Because both these columns were belonging to a n. So, I can straight away go and say my expression for k c is a n. Yes or no? That was very simple. The expression for j c was b n a n, whereas the expression for k c was only a n. So, what is left now? J b as well as k b. So, I will, I will, I will use the same uh, area here. I will just retain the expressions which we have done here. Okay, so, that we can solve it and we can understand using a k map simplification, how is it that we can do this. Okay. So, this was done, j c is done, this is the expression for j c, 
K C is done, expression for K C, what is left is J B and K B. So, I will draw the uh, K map simplification boxes for both and let us see how it leads to. So, as and when you practice this, this becomes very easy. So, C n, B n, A n, always remember C is the M S B, whereas A is the L S B. 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. So, this belongs to C n, this belongs to, uh, okay, we wrote it this way, right. So, this belongs to B n and these two belong to A n. Okay. So, that is how it is going to be. Now, I have to fill it up with the variables, the value for j b. So, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. Okay. So, for 0 it is 0, 1, then for 2 it is x. So, 2 is here, for 3 it is again x, for 4 it is 0 and for 5 also it is 0. So, for 4 it is 0 and for 5 also it is 0, rest all will be do not care. So, how I can merge is now? I have to include 1, I cannot merge them vertically as I did earlier, now I have to merge them horizontally, okay. see here this way. So, what am I doing now? I am taking this x as 1, now you should say why am I doing this? The moment you merge something, you eliminate one variable in the sense you go to simplify the expression. Okay. So, this will now become what? Is it only A? No, we have to eliminate two variables. So, we should say whether it is in C n or C n bar. Yes, it is in C n bar. Okay. So, your expression for uh, J B would be it is not in C n, it is in C n bar okay. and it is in A n. Okay, so, it is going to be C n bar and A n. So, that is going to be the expression for your J B. Finally, we will now do it for K B. So, this is going to be the last block that we are going to draw. It may sound a bit lengthy the way we are doing it, but believe me it is a very methodical approach that we are trying to follow and unless and until we get lose our uh, concentration, we will make mistakes otherwise it is a very easy. So, never let your guard off when you are trying to solve any problems. Okay. It is always the last steps that we do the simplest of the mistakes, create those blunders and then end up doing the wrong results. Okay. So, the last one have the patience, it is K B now, I write an expression for K B. So, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. Okay. So, this was for C n, this was for B n and these two columns are for A n. Okay. So, now I am going to write this is for this one K B 0 1 both are x 2 is 0 2 is 0 1 0 here 3 is 1 4 is x 5 is x these two not there. So, go ahead and do it as x. Now, how many can you merge 2 yes 4 definitely yes. So, I will go ahead and make it as a quartet which is a group of 4. So, what does this now become? It again becomes your A n as was the case in case of K C. So, your expression for K B is also A n. So, okay, so, these become our final expressions which I am trying to show you with the square boxes. Okay. Just in case I miss something, okay. J C was B n A n. K C was A n, J B was C n bar A n, K B was A n and J and K were both 1. So, by doing this now, we have now solved the entire logic equation with respect to the uh, inputs for the flip flop in terms of the outputs C, B and A. So, the only job now is to build a circuit and make the interconnections which we are going to see in the next slide over here. So, how is it that we are going to do that? It is a very simple exercise. Okay. Okay, so, yeah, so this is
that is wonderful good. Okay. So, these were the four k maps that we have done, these are the four k maps that we had already done. So, where we got these expressions for j c, k c, j b and k b. Okay. Yes, there you go. So, this is the eventual circuit and let us try to uh, sort of uh, dissect this bit by bit and understand how the circuit was done. The first part of the design problem was identifying the three flip flops, all of them are going to be the j k flip flops. Okay. So, this is flip flop for L s b which is a, okay. this is the flip flop for a, this is the flip flop for b and this is the flip flop for c. So, what were our design equations? Our design equation said j a and k a were both logic high. So, what have we done? We have connected them to 1 which is logic high. What about j b? j b was given as c n bar a n that means what? I require 1 to input 1 to input and gate. Do I require inverter to get C n bar? Not necessary. Why? Because all these flip flops have a true output as well as a complement output. So, where do I get my C n bar? I am getting my C n bar here. So, I will take C n bar okay, and I am going to and it with A n and give that to your J B because that was the equation J B was C n bar anded with A n. What was K B? K B was nothing but A n. So, A n I am also giving it here to K B. What about the last flip flop that we have to worry about which is flip flop C. So, what was the value for J C? J C was an and of B n and A n. So, again you require a simple and gate. Okay. You are going to take the b from here and a is going to be taken from here again. Okay. So, this is where you are going to take the a from. So, that is that is what the circuit is going to do. So, you want to take a from the output of first flip flop and it with the output of the second flip flop ignore this part here it is a small cor correction here. So, then give that to j c. So, what does that mean now? We are left with only k c and what was k c? Again it was nothing but a n. So, what am I doing? k c and again I am giving it to a n. So, this way you can see here we are able to make these connections for all the flip flops and what is the last thing that is left? The last thing that is left is connecting the clock input for all these flip flops. Now, we have taken negative edge triggered flip flops and clocked all of them simultaneously that means, these are all synchronous counters see here I am going to give the clock to all of them simultaneously. That means, all the flops change the state at the same time that is the meaning of a synchronous counter. So, if you can see here this is what the uh, entire flip flop is or the entire counter is which is a mod 6 counter. So, how was synthesis done? We, we just have to follow methodical approach and straight away it yields us the most optimum solution. When can you get the most optimum solution? If you solve the k maps diligently try to eliminate as many variables as possible. So, that you can form the duplets, you can form the quadrants, you can also form the octets if you want and eliminate as many variables as you can. So, that your logic expression becomes much more simpler. So, all this is done then how is it that you are going to cascade these counters. Remember counters are seldom used in isolation. Okay. You always tie them up with multiple counters and develop a cascade of counters. In our case all I need to know is when it resets from 6 back to 0. So, I have to identify the condition when all the flip flops are 0 that would mean that I have done one overflow that is what I want right from 6 go back to 0 means I have now overflowed once or it is a carry out. So, how to generate a carry out? I have to generate a carry out the moment all the outputs are 0. So, if all the outputs are 0 what happens to the complement outputs? all the complement outputs would be 1 that is what we are doing here. So, what we are doing here is we are taking the output of we are taking the complement output sorry we are taking the complement output of all the flip flops. Okay. So, we are taking a bar here we are taking a bar okay. we are taking b bar and then we are also taking c bar. So, when all of them are 0 
Now, all the component outputs would be 1, 1 and 1. So, y will be 1 only when your flip flop outputs are 0, 0, 0. Why? Because in this case, the complement outputs were 1, 1, 1. So, if I choose an AND gate here with the complement uh, output as an inputs, then I will get y is equal to 1 whenever the flip flop overflows. So, this completes the entire synthesis. By synthesis, what do we mean is, I do not know how the actual circuit is going to look like. I do not have to do the trial and error. I do not have to think about options. All I have to do is follow a methodical approach, which will eventually yield me the most optimum circuit. That is what is called as design as a synthesis problem. So, with that, I think we come to the end of this particular session. So, what is it that uh, we had done? Frankly speaking, just one agenda we had. The agenda was to design a counter using FSM technique. Deliberately, I have chosen the blackboard technique here, so that we are able to teach the points one by one, look at the transition tables one by one and some slightly new ideas compared to some old ideas which you have already used. So, you do not have to get confused with the various methods approached uh, applied elsewhere. Whatever methods you choose, it is good enough. I tried my best here to try and give something which can be much more methodical and easier to remember and much more uh, optimal in terms of solution. So, that is it for me. So, let us see again in the next session, wherein we are going to deal with the D2A converters and the A2D converters. Thank you.